It's the year 2028 when a loving husband, father, and police officer is critically injured. Advanced technology then transforms him to part man, part machine. It's an 80s remake, but this is RoboCop like you have never seen him before. Hello, I'm Gary Oldman. Welcome to Made in Hollywood. And here's a scene from RoboCop. We need to give Americans a product they can love. A figure they can rally behind. We can't put a machine on the street. Forget machines. They want a product with a conscience. Give me your first thoughts about doing a reboot or a remake, if you will, of RoboCop. Like, initially, you thought what? I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a, was a, a, a project or a, a, a movie that that it made sense to me. Better alive, you're coming with me. There's so many wrong ways you can do a remake of RoboCop, and I knew if they got a guy like Jose that's gonna direct this movie, he's gonna have a very strong idea. I loved his movies. I saw his documentary, Bus 174, and his two Elite Squad movies in the theater in Sweden, and I consider him as one of the you know, most interesting directors on the planet. For me, Jose Padilla was a director that I really wanted to work with, and I thought the cast and the crew that they were assembling was incredible. Something that knows what it feels like to be human. I was very honored to sit down with a filmmaker like that. I was amazed that he actually knew who I was. Um, and, and when he told me the story that he wanted to tell using the, the concept of Robocop, I was, I was blown away. I thought it was, it was brilliant. There's certain directors, they look and you just know there's an essence in there. You know, there's a, a real classy filmmaker there. And as an, as an actor, you're always looking to work with filmmakers like that. Give me mom a kiss. My baby. Too slow, boy. We're gonna put a man inside a machine. It's a remake from the 80s, but it's so appropriate for today. That was the feeling that I got after talking to him. And, he, and he, when he told me about it, that he, you know, he wanted to make this a harrowing emotional journey that discussed some really interesting philosophical and political ideas, and all in the shape of a big scale, exciting action movie. And, and you know, that's really the kind of movie that I want to see. I think you should kind of struggle more before you run. It's, it's an action film, uh, it's Robocop, but it also is political, social, it has heart, it has soul, it has depth, it has complexities. Time to wake him up. This whole issue of security versus liberty and th that sort of free freedom, freedoms being sort of taken from you, I mean, it's, it's very... Uh, it's very topical. He's coming. Don't play good cop, bad cop. Bad cop, RoboCop. What was more challenging for you? Kind of the physical limitation that you had or bringing like the emotion to this area, concentrating on that? When I was going through the most, you know, deep, emotional and existential anxiety and despair, I had to be completely still and I had no, you know, I couldn't access my body and that's, you know, a difficult thing because that's how you sort of re-enact those feelings and that made the, you know, made it a much higher difficulty level to, to reach those feelings and, and portray them in, a, in an honest and, and truthful way. But I did have Gary Oldman playing opposite me and that makes it a hell of a lot easier, I can tell you that. I mean, he was great in rehearsal. Joel, you, you, I mean, he was just terrific in rehearsal, sitting there in his t-shirt and his jeans, and I just thought, well, once he gets, once he gets the suit on, movies like this tend to get overlooked, don't they? You know, I hope people see, you know, beyond the genre, to see what a really good performance that is. Shanka! Made in Hollywood.